Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Rectified Podcast. Today, I have a special guest who will shift your beliefs and will definitely change the way you promote yourself and your brand on Instagram. Without further ado, let me introduce Carol Bardesano or the digital buzz on Instagram, creator of Run Your Instagram as a CEO. Carol, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. And I can't wait for you to share all your knowledge with your audience. Let's kickstart this episode by you telling us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do. Perfect. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I, you know that I love your work as well. And so when I made this happen. So a little bit about me, my background comes in been working in marketing for 23 years, but my background is actually corporate. So I worked in corporate for 16 years before launching uh, the Digital Bus, which is the company that I have now. And I basically took a leap of faith about seven years ago where I said, wait a second, there's a need in the market. A lot of people were asking me, can you train me in digital marketing? Can you train me in this thing? And now, mind you, this is, we're talking 2010. So back then there was a, there weren't a lot of people doing this. There weren't a lot of educators. So I, I developed a program while I was still working in Swatch Group. And it was a two day executive program for people to learn everything they needed about Instagram marketing, digital marketing, online, Google, and it became very successful. And so that's when I thought, maybe there's something here. And so I left corporate after 16 years, which was a huge shift for me because I, I love corporate. I know I'm not the, the person who's going to hate on corporate. I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of flaws like everything, but so does, yes. you know, having a business. And so we launched this business and in the past few years, we have shifted to only concentrating on Instagram. Instagram has grown so much, has become so robust has developed so many different tools and placements that it really needs a, a specific training with a business approach. And it's something that we realized no one else was doing. And so there, that's why you would see a lot of small business owners being overwhelmed, being, you know, following the wrong uh, playbook and then thinking that Instagram doesn't work. So Instagram does work. You just need the right plan. And that plan is a business approach. So I always say there's two paths on Instagram. There's the content creator slash influencer model. And then there's the entrepreneurial model. And those models have very different strategies and very different execution. And so if you are on the wrong model trying to achieve a different goal, you're going to be posting for the rest of your life and not get any result. And so that's exactly what we try to help business owners with. And um, and we We've done that with large brands, small brands, I mean, you name it. We've had um, all kinds of people, all kinds of niches. We're talking over 5,000 students. And so we know there's a, there's a playbook that works and we constantly update it because trends change, customer behavior change, the platform changes. And so that's exactly what we're doing right now. We are um, mm. specialists in helping business owners get more from the platform when it comes to sales but not by doing more, which is what everyone wants. I don't think, <laughs> exactly. I don't think anyone thinks of posting as their idea of fun, right? Or scrolling. <laughs> exactly. So true. Um, Carol, we often see, and I was also like uh, one of these people who at the beginning of Instagram, who used to do this. We often see this. We follow influencers. We see that we, it all seems like it's effortless. So they're like walking and snapping pictures. Meanwhile, it's all pre-planned and all of that. So we start doing that. Or if you're like selling a product or something, you would think that, oh my God, I'm just going to snap some pictures of my product and everybody will come and buy it. Maybe that was true at the beginning of Instagram. We all did that. But as Instagram is evolving and all those features and reels and stories and lives and you know, every day there's, there are new things. We know our friend Adam yeah. keeps launching things. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, so you came up with this special program, Run Your Instagram as a CEO. And I'm, I'm part of the group <laughs> with you. And it's really different than everything that we have because you take this platform and you transform it into a, like a real marketing 
Machine. Um, <laughs> machine. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about the concept, what made you think about it and like how it is, what does it mean to run your Instagram le- like a CEO mainly? Right. So basically what we see is that people fall into different categories when it comes to what they're trying to get Instagram to do. And like you said, Instagram is a marketing machine. It's a marketing engine. You just have to know what to get out of the platform. So a lot of people, and this happens to large brands as well as small business, business owners, they either turn their Instagram into this giant infomercial of, you know, I'm just going to post announcements and have my photos, you know. Yeah. And then hope people come and it's like a website. And then there's uh, another category of people who just really want to entertain and they get stuck in friend zone. And so they really want to put out content. They are being guided by the wrong metrics. And then they exhaust themselves because they don't really get the results they want in terms of business growth. And so what you what you want to do, and this is what we teach and, and what people need to understand, that the platform is somewhere in the middle. The platform is about content that really people care about and you injecting your business message, your brand message, your story in a way that helps your business as well. So it's a, it's sort of a Venn diagram where the two meet in the middle. And that is, that's exactly how or you need to create content for Instagram. And so when people uh, talk about, well, what's the difference between content strategy, marketing strategy, and sales strategy, which are the three different disciplines that you need to know to really get mm-hmm. Instagram to work for you. And people think it's just posting. <laughs> uh, people, yeah. I'm just going to post more. That's going to solve my problems. And I wish that were true because, you know, creating content is fun. And so the uh, sexy part is the strategy. And so when you think about those three disciplines, uh, you need to think about it this way. Marketing is how you trigger people to be interested in what you do or what you can do for them, what you sell, offer. And sales is really monetizing that traffic. So turning that action, turning that into profitable action. Content is the vehicle in which you're going to communicate these two things. And so those three Different strategies, different skill sets are really important for business owners on is the reason why people are overwhelmed is because they think creating content is running a business just because you grew a ton of followers, then that's running mm. a business. And that's not really the case. The truth of the matter is, is that posting is a small part of running a business. Successful entrepreneurs know that posting is not running a business. And so, and so by having a more effective strategy, it really allows you to have more time to do things that really move the needle. At the end of the day, you have to concentrate on revenue generating tasks when it comes to Instagram, because like you said, there's a thousand tools. So you have, yes, you have reels, you have feed, you have stories, you have lives, you have captions, but you also have notes and you have broadcast channels and you have, (laughs) you know, engagement stickers and you have, you know, real effects and you have all these things. And do they all matter? Do they all move the needle? And so it's really important that you focus and you invest your energy in things that are going to support your vision, support your growth, support your bottom line. And that's where people get distracted. They start getting into, oh, so-and-so is doing this without knowing the results. Things that look good on the outside, so-and-so has a lot of views, I'm going to replicate that, which, you know, it's really a terrible way to be guided in your business. And so Mm -hmm. the key thing is to have a business approach, understand who you serve, understand how you can help them and create content that serves your very specific audience. Not the content for your family, not the content for your pets, not the content for your peers, <laughs> not for your competitors. It is for the prospect. The content yes. needs to hit a nerve with your prospect. This isn't your dear diary moment. This isn't your personal account. I mean, the mm. photo dump with a summer barbecue. No one cares. And so, yeah, but a lot of people say, oh, you don't need a niche. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, misinformation out there about mm, how so to true. Instagram. But the reason is because there's a, a lot of people who have a lot of followers, which are great, but they aren't, don't necessarily know Instagram strategy or marketing strategy. 
And so mm-hmm. that's the idea when it comes to how do you turn Instagram into a marketing machine that works for you? Instagram needs to work for you. You don't work for Instagram. A lot of people are acting mm-hmm. like they work for Instagram. Eight hours a day on Instagram, no weekends, constantly there. We're creating content for the platform at the end of the day. So you are not a content creator for the platform. You're a business owner. Instagram is a tool for you. Let's not forget that. Yeah, that's so true. Um, we often see all these people talk about all these hacks and tactics. The same happens with, you know, the the thing that I do and what I work in. The same for Instagram, the same for every single platform. There's always like quick ways and hacks and post five million times a day and do this and do yeah. that and use this sound and this sticker will make you go <laughs> viral. And, <laughs> yeah, the, will make you go viral. And this effect will, I don't know, do what to you. And yes, maybe that's true. Maybe it will, I don't know, it does. It never worked with me, but maybe it will bring me, I don't know, a million views on a reel, which again, never uh-huh. happened with me. <laughs> but at the end of the day, did anyone sign up? Did anyone buy something from me? Did anyone schedule a call with me to like ask about what I do? Anything like, I think, That's the difference between when you have a business. So if you're a product based like our audience, um, did, how much did they sell from one reel or from all those reels during like this week or whatever they posted? Like these are the metrics that they need to track instead of saying, oh my God, I got 5,000 likes on this post. So what I like about your program is that you talk about all of this, but also you link it to real marketing frameworks. Um, and that's why it appealed to, to my marketing brain because I come from a lot of degrees and educational background. So tell us a little bit more how you thought about, you know, taking these frameworks that are known in the marketing world and then putting them into the world of Instagram and social media. Yeah, that's such a good point because I do see a lot of people trying to hack their way around Instagram. And the thing is that, listen, tips, tricks, and hacks can only get you so far. When you hear things like, this is the right posting time, or use this trending audio, or use 7 to 12 hashtags, those are all things about post optimization. And post optimization really is such a small percentage of the success of your content strategy. And we define mm-hmm. success. When people tell me my reel did really well or my reel did really bad, I always ask them define well or define bad. Because I, if you're coming to me with views, I mean, that is one part of it. But I'm more interested in link clicks. Yeah. At the end of the day, the goal is traffic. And so looking at uh, visible metrics or public metrics of other people is, 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 it's very dangerous territory because you don't know what's driving revenue. And, mm-hmm. and so the tips and tricks are sort of the cherry on top. Hashtags is a very common question that come up and I get frustrated, a little frustrated with this question because it's such a small percentage. You should not be spending more than seven minutes on hashtags. That sort of. Uh, I make the analogy because it's an analogy that makes sense to most people who ever wanted to lose weight. And it's just like training yourself for a marathon by eating more carrots. I mean, that's going to help, but you're going to need so much more than that. You're going to need to do <laughs> yeah. immense work to train for a marathon than just eating more carrots. And so that's sort of how I compare hashtags. Yes, sure, they're nice to have at them. It's not going to hurt to do, you know, content-specific, niche-specific hashtags, do 30, do 20. The truth of the matter is, is that hashtags don't work as well as they used to, but they're not going to hurt you. So sure, at them. Where you should spend the biggest part of your strategy is in first understanding who it is that you're serving. So who is your target audience? And you got to understand how it is that They are seeing the problem that they're going through so that you can articulate your marketing message in a way that they can hear it, in a way that they see themselves. This is honestly one of the most difficult things to do because it takes time and it takes research. People just Mm -hmm. want to jump straight to the hack and you can't hack uh, consumer behavior. You can't hack psychology. You can't hack emotions. You can't hack community. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. Listen. 
I wish I, we, we could all hack and we would all be, you know, insta famous, insta rich, and, but it doesn't work that way. So, so spending time understanding who it is that you serve. A lot of people start a business and they think of the logo, the content pillars, they'll think about, you know, the color palette, they'll think about the website. And that is so the wrong way of going about it. You got to start with, okay, who do I help? Is there a need for this thing also? Because yes. there's no need, no market is not just going to save you. And is mm. this, is this niche, is this emerging? Is this, you know, trending upwards or is this dying down? Let's say I got into the business of doing maps. Well, imagine that. I mean, who's going to be interested in a map um, or, or something that is on its way out? Or you know, if I were to create a course on, I want to say my space or just like dying platforms, it's not going to work. When you think about your framework, you need to think, ask yourself those three questions. Do I, who do I serve? Is there a need for this? And how do I communicate this so that I generate demand? Because you can have the best product. There may be a need in it, but if you don't convey the value of it, mm -hmm. you know, the, the sales are going to go to your competitor. And most probably you have a lot of competition because it's just the way it is. Competition is good. People are always afraid like, oh, we're, my space is so competitive. That's a good thing. That means there's a need for you, what you do. I'm always mm -hmm. concerned when there's no competition, when you are in a, you know, a blue ocean, uh, which, is yes. a, which is another type of strategy, the blue ocean strategy, which is you have no competitors, but then you have to create, you have to start by educating people that they actually need what you do. And yeah, so from scratch, exactly from scratch. So yeah. you're getting from problem unaware people to get them to problem aware, which is extremely difficult. I usually like to leave that for the big brands. Once the mm -hmm. big brands make people aware they have a problem, then the small businesses can take over some segments. And so thinking about sub segments is another great way of approaching what you do on Instagram with your product. And so, and so then once you define who you serve and if there's a need for your product, then you create content around it and every single piece of content has to serve your business, your brand message, your, um, you know, your story. And you can't be posting random things that don't serve any of those purposes, because if you do, mm -hmm. then it's just posting fluff and you're exhausting yourself with just fluff and noise. And that's sure. not the point of running the business. <laughs> True. Let's go more practical about this. If I'm selling a product online and I know my audience, I know all of those things that you talked about already, what can I do to be more successful and convert more people to buy my products through Instagram? You're talking physical or, or service? Physical product. Pretty much they both have the same principles. So the first thing that you want to do is that you want to identify the competitive gap. So you do want to do competitive research heavy early on and market research and see what it is that your competitors are doing. Who's serving your audience right now? How are they serving them? And how are they not serving them? The not serving them is worth the boldest. A lot of people look at their competitors and they start becoming mm -hmm. diluted versions of their competitors. They'll start doing exactly sure. the same things, same type of contests and type of uh, images, sometimes same, same type of branding. And why would anyone go to the copycat? Everyone is going to go to the original, even mm -hmm. if you're cheaper, right? Because you may do all that and yeah. then just go cheaper. So unless you're a fast food chain, you don't really want to do that. The, the real opportunity lies in finding those gaps and then doubling that down on it and um and that is that again takes research but that can really boost your business in a way that that you know you have you know you couldn't have done by trying to imitate your competitor so whatever product it is product or service check and see who else is serving that audience that you would also serve and start to do a little bit of offsetting whatever they do. Because I guarantee you, they are not serving everyone. Not even Apple sure. serves yeah. everyone. Not even Nike True. serves everyone. And so if you, your competitors cannot be serving everyone. There is probably a chunk of the population that is not being served by this one need they have. 
So when I came into the industry, everyone was dancing. Everyone was in their 20s. Everyone is like, you know, swearing and using hip hop. Like I, it was nothing of the stuff that I was expecting to do. And so I went a completely different route. And I have a lot of students who say like, I bought from you because of the way you are. Like I think never used money for my marketing messaging. It was yeah. like, oh, I made this $100,000 this month. I made this. This is very typical in my space. Mm. My competitors mm. all do this. So true. And I did not want to go down that route, but I could have because everyone else was doing it. I mean, for a second there, I had an identity crisis where I felt, should I do that? But then it felt so natural because I it just didn't mm-hmm. fit right with, with my branding. And so I decided not to do it. And I enrolled a ton of people said, thank you for not doing that because we hate yeah. it. And so, me too, <laughs> right? Including <laughs> me you, too, okay? yes, yes. <laughs> and and so and so again, there's a there's of course all those online coaches have a ton of people who, who are you know interested in that kind of messaging who get lured into that kind of messaging. But there were some people that didn't like it, and so that's yeah. a that there's an opportunity. Um, instead of trying to be someone, I always tell people, look for your zone of genius. We all have a zone of genius. We all do. And and really get good at it. Maybe learn the mm-hmm. skills. You know, if you do a lot of people, for example, talking reels. Oh, I don't want to do talking reels for a thousand reasons. I don't like my accent. I don't like my hair. I don't like my forehead. I don't like the tone of voice. I don't like, I don't have a pretty background. People are filled with reason. And the truth is that there's an opportunity there because most people are not doing talking reels. And so go out, get at it, get really good and practice and I guarantee you there's going to be people who say, oh, finally, someone is talking. I can make a connection there. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, so so that's that's a really good way to stand out no matter what it is that you sell. Mm-hmm. This is very interesting because so many people who contact me, you know, to work together, they the first thing that they say, I want to be like, X brand, you know, for example, somebody in the food industry, there's a very famous brand here for like protein bars, and they're so active on all social media platforms and they tell their stories and, you know, how they went to therapy, how they did this, you know, everything about their lives. Meanwhile, they're selling chocolate protein bars and everybody comes and tells me, I want to be like this brand. And I'm like, Okay, can you do the same thing? No. Okay, they they want to be like them, but they don't want to do the same thing, which leaves us with no other choice. But what you're saying is that check what they're doing, but be different. And I think this is such an important thing to tell your story, tell who you are, how you came up with this product, like what you did, because this is you, you're special. You came up with this idea and not somebody else's like don't copy anyone else but I really love that you said this because everybody falls into the same trap be people who don't want to hear all those stories to buy a product and so Mm -hmm. you know exactly exactly Uh, and your audience might not want you know your reality tv show and they want something else to see on your social media platform so you be you true to yourself and then Things will happen. In a product-based business, we have the tendency to think that it's not important for me as a small business owner to show myself and tell my story. And I'll just like snap pictures of this chocolate or that cup or whatever it is that they're selling, like this face cream, and then everybody will start following me. How can they take that one level further than just posting a picture of this face cream or hand cream or chocolate bar. Yeah. So I always say the website sells the product, Instagram sells the lifestyle. And this is very Mm -hmm. true for product-based businesses. I work with a ton of product-based businesses. And the truth is that people want to see the product in action first and foremost. So posting just static images of the products is really not going to cut it. That's one thing. The second thing is that Images, you want to integrate images with people. Faces always convert more, always. This has been tried and tested on advertising, on Facebook ads, on Instagram, organic marketing. 
And so including faces of people really humanizes your brand. At the end of the day, people buy from people. People don't buy from logos. They don't buy from companies. They don't buy from branding, color palettes. And so you want to do that. An opportunity is huge when it comes to reels and stories. So video marketing in general, where, where you can pull back the curtain in terms of your process. So whatever it is that you have, whatever product, I don't care what it is, whether it's a face cream or a piece of chocolate or, you know, art or whatever, there is a process that went, that you went through to create this. And so what is the process behind the output? It's, it's taking them on the journey of what it is that you're creating. It's going to really make them emotionally attached or emotionally interested to the product itself. It is not the mm-hmm. same saying. And I, I have a student who does, um, she does these beautiful purses. And instead of just saying, like, here's this purse, she would go on and do, like, hyperlapse videos of her, like, doing everything, all, like, all of the stitches. I mean, the level of work that you see makes you yeah. appreciate it so much more. Mm-hmm. It's like the first time you cook something. You're like, wow. Yes. Like, I don't care yes. about the taste. I have, like, this took work, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you don't appreciate it when someone else cooks. But when you cook, you're like, this was a lot of work. I had to do all these things. And so showing that it's very important uh, for you as a business owner. And I get that a lot of business owners don't want to be on camera. They don't want to show their space. This is a huge issue for business owners. And you don't have to become the star of your account necessarily. Um, you have to do two things. The first thing, you could find a brand ambassador. You can find someone in your mm-hmm. team. You can even find a creator that that create, makes a little bit more UGC type content, user generated type content. Those perform really well. And the second yeah. thing is that you just do hyperlapse videos or behind the scenes with music on top and messages, so that you pull back the current. If you don't want to be talking on video, if you don't want to, you know, show all that process. And the third thing that I would ask, like, why don't you want to be on video? Who are we afraid of? Like I have this this concept mm. that I call it the so what concept. So they're gonna judge you. Some people are gonna judge you. So what? So it's not gonna perform. Mm-hmm. So what? Did you die? Like who cares? Like life's so short. Like why are we so worried about opinions and things and people? Like no one who so is true. doing less, who's doing more, is gonna criticize you. It's always the people that are doing less. That's why they have mm-hmm. time to criticize you. And mm-hmm. so you need to get out of your net. Like, what's the reason? I, I like to get further into the root when business owners tell me I don't want to be on video. Why? So that you can tackle this root problem. Because that's how you're going to set yourself free from all of it. Be, you know, so if you true. wake up to, with a really important message, you're not going to worry about all the nonsense because it's, it's just like such a distraction to the larger opportunity that you have as a business owner it's three people roll their eyes from the comfort of their couch while eating doritos but you impacted a hundred people well that's a nice ratio for me Mm -hmm. so true haters gonna hate jealous people are gonna be jealous whether you're online or offline it's the same thing so just go for it go for it it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. who doubts you as long as you don't doubt you exactly i love this i really really Mm -hmm. love this Carol, I feel like we could talk about this for like for sure. Five hours. Yes, I know. Five hours. <laughs> but we're coming towards the end of this episode. And I usually ask three questions at the end of every episode. Perfect. Are you ready for this? Go for it. How would your friends describe what you do for a living? <laughs> that's a that's such a good question. <laughs> my friends or my family, because I think my family thinks I do telemarketing or something. Um, <laughs> my friend thinks, my friends think that it's just posting. Honestly, a lot of people have this misconception about Instagram mm-hmm. marketing or, or when I try to explain that I do online courses, they don't really understand that concept. They've been yes. always there doing all the courses or how it works, but they, they do have a vision. Like it's very exciting. Like it's sort of very celebrity. Like I'm going live. I'm appearing on camera. And that's, that's really only 10% of what people see. You know this. So, um, true, yes. so they would probably say that um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an influencer, which is not a word I like for myself, but yes. that's what they would say. Isn't that uh-huh. horrible? Yes. <laughs> they would say yes. that I'm an Instagram influencer. Uh. <laughs> 
Well, it has nothing to do with being. In, well, you are influencing, but you're not influ and an influencer in, an the, influencer in a traditional <laughs> sense of that. Yeah. Question number two: What is one thing that your program or your work did for your client that you didn't expect? So we have. Um, I mean, the, the the framework is working so so well that I get impressed honestly almost daily in, in 90 days or less people report getting sales but we had stood and make seven figures in less than a year which is amazing I reported on wow. this I do real case studies none of those fake mm -hmm. reviews we don't write reviews everyone is tied yes. with names and everything so we had this brand called elements watches and it was the most fascinating thing because they enrolled in the course and um, this talk about identifying a gap in the market. They developed a watch that really supported a specific cost. And so the watch industry is huge. I come from the watch industry. I worked at Swatch Group, mm -hmm. but the watches really don't stand for anything. So this person, as well as business, developed watches that really supported specific costs by the color of the watches. And people felt so compelled about this mission that he just, you know, um, it just grew, grew so much. And with the right content strategy, the right framework, got seven figures in less than a year. Wow. Uh, this is amazing. amazing. Yeah. Yes. This is great. Uh, um, last question. Is there one book that changed your life and that you would recommend to our audience? Uh, that's such a hard question because I am a reader. I love reading. Mm -hmm. I, I do read a lot. And one book that... This is going to sound weird because this book has nothing to do with marketing. The book that transformed me the most for what the person that I was. And it's a book called Dying to Be Me by Anita Morjani. Have you heard of this book? Mm, no. So, no. Okay. So, this. I have to check it out. Okay. So, well, it depends on if you're interested in the subject matter. But my cousin passed away six years ago in a traffic accident. And she was like okay. my baby sister. And that shifted everything that I do. I was never the same. But to make peace with the fact that she was gone, I started reading a lot about what happens after we die. What happens? Mm. And so this book came to me. You know, books come to you. I yes, saw a yes. program. Everyone was talking. This is the case of a woman. She is an Indian woman. It's the most studied case in science and medicine. She died. She had cancer, stage four cancer. She was in the hospital in Hong Kong. And all her, basically her, um, you know, uh, her liver function, her heart, everything stopped. And she went to the other side, saw her dad. Um, and the book is about what happened. And then she came back after being three years in a wheelchair. And she basically started gaining function after she came back. And, you know, she was told wow. on the other side that she was going to heal herself. She started in 90 minutes. She was fully healthy while in the hospital every doctor came to check her they did all these analysis no one could understand what was happening and the book will change just the way you live life and so mm. that book to me was completely transformative and mm. um, and i recommend it to anyone it's 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 a tough book because she talks a lot about the the deceased before she goes on the other side but when you read what happens on the other side and, and the way she wow. narrates it, and this story is amazing. I mean, uh, it's a must read to anyone, mm. whether you, you believe it or not. I truly believe there is something else on the other side. But yeah. it, it gives you a different approach. And this happens when you when you lose someone. You can't, sure. you don't live the same way and you don't want to live the same way because you've been so true. taken yeah. to the core. And mm -hmm. so, so I would say that that's the book that changed me the most. Mm. Like you're talking about it. I'm getting yeah. chills. Like she went and saw her dad and I'm like, I wish I can do that. You need it's to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you need to read that book because mm -hmm. it was. I'll check it out. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to share it also the link okay. in the description Perfect. of this podcast too. Carol, tell us where our audience can find you. And if they're interested in your program, how can they join you mainly? Perfect. So. The Digital Buzz, it's with a B-U-Z-Z, -Z, not boss as a driving bus, the Digital Buzz. You can come join me on Instagram. My DMs are always open. I love to say hi in the DMs. 
and you can check out all the content there. If you're a business owner, I really encourage you to start applying uh, a business approach to Instagram. And if you want further support, real support, a true playbook, and lucky coaching calls, then definitely uh, I would like to invite you to run your Instagram like a CEO, which is our signature program. Perfect. I'm going to link to your Instagram Perfect. and everything again in the description of this podcast. Thank you, Carol, for being a guest. And to all the listeners, I'll be back next week with a new episode.